Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Arnold Clark. It is Friday. I'm Peter Martin. Welcome to our Christmas show. Yes, Alan Ruff and Barry Ferguson are here as well. Only one of us has enough money to buy a Christmas jumper with lights on it as well. Barry and Ruffy looking resplendent. They're getting into the festive period. Oh, he's, he is. He's looking well. <laughs> I don't even know he'd lights on it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, let's see if we can light up Ruffy's life with uh, a few topics of discussion. <laughs> Yeah, lots to get our teeth into in our uh, final uh, show of uh, the season before, of course, it hits the festive period. We'll have uh, quite a few shows that will interest you. The best of will be uh, looking back at all of 2019, some of the highs and lows in our programmes. And over and above that, we'll certainly be uh, throwing out a few other one-to-one -one specials for you to enjoy over the festive period. And we'll be back bigger and better in 2020 for you right after the Premiership opens up again. Of course, there's a winter shutdown, which we're all in favour of, Ruffy, aren't we? Yeah, we certainly are. Uh, I think the teams are as well. You know that. Uh, although the big clubs sort of use it to go away somewhere, and I know they still train and get away from the pressures and injuries can get cleared up. But uh, Championship, they still carry on. Yeah, you know, right through because. Obviously, you need to, in the winter, you need the revenue from the, the games. Yep, uh, we'll be away, but Ruffy will be carrying on in his role as uh, watching and supporting Partick Thistle as often as he possibly can. Um, of course, everybody seems to be in favour of the uh, winter shutdown and the top flight, Barry. Uh, now, it seems everybody's in favour of getting VAR in as soon as possible. Yeah, I, I was in favour, um, but the more games I've watched Peter down the Premier League, um, the amount of time it takes them to, to make a decision, that's the only issue I've got with it. Three, four, five minutes even, there was one game I watched. Um, but let, if they can sort that side of it out, I think it would be a, a good idea, because you, you've seen quite a few decisions go against quite a few clubs up here over uh, the past six months. Yeah, financially it's going to take a, a fair whack to get it all going for all the SBFL clubs in the Premiership anyway, Ruffy. Over and above that, Barry says it does take a bit of time sometimes with decisions. I think they could eradicate that by basically saying, OK, it was brought in to minimise the mistakes, but if there is a debate over it, I think the referee should go over to the touchline quicker mm -hmm. and take the decision out of... The, the the main people who are in the mm -hmm. you know the the, the 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 main office looking at these replays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think I saw it in America that they, they did it there. You know, they have a, like a fourth official with a giant screen, uh, and obviously two heads are better than one. Uh, and he's had a chance to look at it maybe two or three times before the referee gets over to him, uh, and that might be a way of of. of you know, solving Barry's problem it taking far too long. But they, they could fund the VRA, the VAR with Rangers and Celtic not taking as much money at the end of the season, uh, the, pay, uh, the, the payoff at the end of the year. Yeah, what's that all about, Ruffy? No, I mean, you've just started, you've started a riot there, by the way, because <laughs> no, why the should they, they'll say, why should they'll, we fund it for everybody else? Because it's Rangers and Celtic that want the big decisions right. They're the ones playing in cup finals. They're the ones that are you know, saying that they're not getting the, the right decisions. So if the, if the funding was scaled differently at the end of the season rather than a top-to-bottom scale and it was a level playing field of paying out the money, it would go towards it. I'm sure Rangers and Celtic bring in a lot of money, and quite rightly so in Europe. You know, they deserve everything they get. But if they wanted to push something through, they're the two that could make it happen. Listen, I think if the vast majority of clubs want it, they've all got to put their, their own bit of money in. Yeah. That's the way I think it's got to happen. 
Um, I know Rangers and Celtic bring the most money in, but I don't think it should only be them that puts the money in to bring yeah. it here. <laughs> but uh, listen, let's not go over the technicalities. <laughs> this is a world record. In 2019, Ruffy's given us our top line four minutes into the programme. <laughs> that is unheard of on this programme. So uh, well done to you, Ruffy. Listen, Neil Lennon's taken a, a further slant on this one. If VR was in, he reckons um, you know Celtic would have benefited greatly from it this season. I think, yeah, most countries have their own way of doing it. I think ideally we'll not have big screens around the stadiums for sure to you know, keep the supporters up to date with things. Maybe if there's a monitor at the side of the pitch, you know, I think when we had the meeting maybe this time last year, the majority of the managers and you know, you know, three heads of the referee and fraternity were all in favour of it. Yeah, um, and of course, uh, you know, Neil Lennon and every other manager, I think, will look at decisions, Ruffy, and say, oh, no, we could have won a game. It could have been the difference between maybe three points and one point or one point and no points. Yeah, I'm sure every manager could state a case uh, throughout the season. But I think the point that Rangers and Celtic will make that they are more than any of the other teams, the attacking side, uh, they'll be in the opposition's uh, box more than others, uh, percentage-wise, so they probably get more decisions against them than anybody else. That's here's an, why I'm it, saying they should chip in. Yeah, here's an inter- I know what you're saying. Here we've got it. We get your message. Okay, you made your point. Don't labour it because you think you've got a good point. Um, and, He's loving it. Yeah, I know he is. There's an interesting twist on this, though, because Julian um, mentioned the fact that he reckons it might alter the way he thinks about defending. Mm, no, not that much. I, last year, seriously, I really... Like when I was started the game, we was talking about it at the beginning of the year. But after I think, if you think about it on the field or when the striker come at you and you're thinking of, oh, there is the camera, I have to be careful, you're definitely not going to defend well. That's an interesting take from uh, Christopher Julian there. I'm not, I'm not sure that you would actually bother. Subconsciously, you're not thinking, I wonder where I'm standing for VAR. Yeah, well, all players are different. Some players, like Julian's mentioned, that he might play a bit deeper. He might um, not be as aggressive. You, you don't know, but for me, if if I was a player, once I cross that white line, that wouldn't cross my mind that VAR was in place. Yeah, OK. Uh, there's a tasty game tonight, certainly looking forward to it. Hibs against Rangers at Easter Road uh, with no Alfredo Morelos. Morelos himself has said that, you know, he hasn't had any offers in to leave Rangers as yet. So if anything, anything that's gone before has all been speculation. There's no concrete offer there. Yeah, well, it's, it's came for uh, Morelos himself. Um, I, I would m- imagine there's a lot of clubs, Peter, looking at him. Sniffing, yeah. There, there's no doubt in my mind with the amount of goals he scored this season. Uh, the way he's acted on the park in terms of his, his discipline has been a lot better than it was last season. Um, but listen, that'll be good news for the Rangers fans because I'm sure they would have been a bit worried. Are you worried that he's not there at Easter Road tonight? Yeah, as a concern. There's no doubt he's, he's Rangers talisman. He's scoring the goals. Um, he's got a good backup and Jermaine Defoe, there's no doubt about that. He's a quality player, but my only worry about that is that he, Defoe might be a bit rusty. Peter, he's not played a lot of football. Um, so we just need to wait and see, because obviously I think the four will play the night in Morelos' absence. And the other aspect of this, which again we mentioned and we've discussed uh, quite a bit over the last couple of months, Ruffy, is teams are going to pick up injuries. And Rangers were go- always going to fall foul of players either being suspended or injured. No Steve Davis, now Philip Hollander. So suddenly that squad is being tested to the full. Yeah, that's obviously why you, a lot of clubs fill the bases. Uh, you Obviously, you want to fill the bases with quality players. Uh, Rangers, year on year, have got a lot, lot better than what, what, they ha- what they have been. But for me, the Morelos one's a big one. You know, he's the man who creates chances, you know, time after time against Celtic. I think it was about nine chances in the game. Motherwell last week was about eight. There's nobody else in the Rangers team creating these chances. There are other people scoring goals. Yeah. But he's the one. So this game tonight is a big one for Rangers. You know, can they compete at the same level without him? 
you know, and, and go on and win games. Yeah, you, you, you just change some phrases just to suit yourself, well, don't, don't you? What was that one? You're at it again. <laughs> I mean, the, actual, the term is load the bases because it's, it's, it's a baseball well, term. You're filling the bases. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing, Ruffy. But I mean, at the end of the day... I was you, wondering why you were laughing. Well, just look up. He just makes it up as he goes oh, along, Barry. It's near it's enough. It. No, it's near yeah, enough. No. You're absolutely right. And of course, listen, some of your player pronunciations this season have been oh, absolutely fantastic. You know what I mean? It's been unbelievable. <laughs> you just make it. another thing. You know, you remind, you remind me of a guy who used to be on telly. He just makes up words and throws them <laughs> in. He's brilliant at it. Um, anyway, as far as the game's concerned, uh, you know, we'll talk about him in a moment. Uh, as far as the way it's going to pan out, Stephen Gerrard uh, reckons this is not all about him sitting in. He thinks they're going to have a go. Well, I think they're very attacking, they're very bold. I think they've got real exciting players in, in, their, in their 11 that, given time and space, um, they can certainly hurt you. They play a bold 4-4-2 diamond. Um, they might change that because within games, certainly at Celtic Park, they change the shape. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the way they go at it, but they've got players that can hurt you. Hibs, certainly. Um, I think they've improved greatly since Jack Ross has come in. I think the main guy for me, he's back fit now, is Boyle. I've always liked Boyle. I know he's got genuine pace, but he's a real threat, Peter. And uh, since he's come back for injury, he's, he's made Hibs look better. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Yeah, and the aforementioned player reckons at home Hibs could be a match for anyone. Yeah, it's massive. Um, you know, we've... We're at home um, and we know what's at stake. Um, we need we need to to crush our three points. We know we, we know that ourselves, and we hopefully we get a good home crowd and we we can bring uh, a positive result. Okay, give me your prediction, Ruffy. Uh I'm going to go for Rangers without the striker uh, to win two one. Uh, Rangers to win two one, Barry. Without a striker. Without their striker, <laughs> oh, right, the main right. striker. Right. Um, it's going to be a tight one. Peter, uh, I think Cubs will go for them, but Rangers, they can't go five points behind. Yeah. They can't go five points behind, so they've got to win it. OK, um, you can give us your own thoughts on that <laughs> as well. Uh, here's a look at the fixtures after uh, tonight's game as well. Uh, Hibs against Rangers, this is how it's all panning out over the weekend, uh, as well as the game at Easter Road. Celtic against Aberdeen tomorrow, uh, Hamilton against Hearts, Kilmarnock, Motherwell, Livingston against Ross County goes ahead, uh, St Johnston against St Mirren. Uh, there was actually a, a suggestion, Ruffy, that maybe that game wasn't going to go ahead. Ross County with a norovirus sweeping through uh, their team, but apparently their plea for the game to be cancelled uh, didn't come in in time. Yeah, I think that was the same with Motherwell a couple of weeks yeah. ago. They, they had a virus as well, so I, I know there's strict rules in, in place. Uh, it's okay saying, oh, I've got seven first team players out, but if you've got a pool of 22, you've still got to make up the 11. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, the big game of the day on the Saturday, Celtic against Aberdeen. Uh, no doubt about that. The, the, the the great thing about it over the festive period is you've got Hibs Rangers, then the Celtic players will know exactly what's at stake again. It could be reduced back to two. Uh, there's all sorts of permutations in there, or they could be you know, in a, a situation where if Hibs did them a turn tonight, they could really turn the screw. Yeah, and Aberdeen come down to Glasgow and either make it very, very difficult for Celtic or they get hammered. You know, And, and recently it's been hammered. Uh, so they have to come up with some plan Obviously, Cosgrove is scoring goals, which will be a problem for Celtic. But I still think Celtic will get too much in the locker, and I think they'll win this one 2 0. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Aberdeen will cause any problems for Celtic. And interestingly enough, I think the battle for third and fourth is, is you know, exciting because it's Aberdeen and Motherwell for me. I don't think anybody else is going to come into the equation. No, I'm with you in that one. I think that's the two that will battle it out for, for third place. And I think that one um, will go right down to the wire, Peter, if I'm being honest with you. I think that'll be a close one. Yeah, Sam Cosgrove, he deserves credit. He could be a real threat. I think, like Morelos, he has to get to the point where, he, where he's scoring against the big teams. He has to make a difference in the big games for me, Ruffy. Yeah, and I think he will. You know, he's come on leaps and bounds. I think he, again, like all good strikers, reply in the supply he gets into the box, you know, and he's getting that just now. And his confidence is very, very high. 
OK, uh, as far as the other matches, we're going to talk about them uh, in the next couple of minutes. But uh, we had a competition running all the way up through to this festive period uh, that I think the prize on offer certainly uh, whetted the appetite across many homes, Scotland, England and right across Europe. It was, of course, the chance to win a signed Lionel Messi top. Uh, the Barcelona superstar uh, looks good in a frame and a certificate of authenticity, but there can be only one winner. Congratulations to May McCardy of Edinburgh in Scotland. You are the winner of PLZ Soccer's Lino Messi competition. Yes, this signed Lino Messi top with a certificate of authenticity is on its way to you, May. Well done in the competition and look out for even more prizes to win on PLZ Soccer. Congratulations, May. I don't know about you, Rafi, but uh, that is magnificent. It would be great if we could make the journey through and maybe hand it over to me as well. That would really uh, put the icing on the cake yeah, and the cherry on top. Very fantastic. Has she moved to Dubai or um, anywhere exotic? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if she's sold it yet, Rafi, but you know, they might, might put it on the wall for at least a month. But nevertheless, great prize, Barry. Oh. Yeah, it's a fantastic prize. I, I just think the guy's a genius. I love watching him. Love watching them, so well, what a prize. Yeah, absolutely. Um, your old mate, Peter Lovenkrantz, uh, linked with the, the Kelly job. Is, it certainly came out of left field. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, I've never seen it coming myself. I, I was surprised when, when I seen it. Um, but I know Peter's in at Rangers working with, the, I think it's under 18s or under 20s, I'm not too sure. Um, but I hear he's doing a fine job. Um, I'm sure he's still got a bit to learn. He would want to stay in there for a, another year or two. Yeah, and they come up against a motherwell side, uh, Ruffy, that... You know, we'll be battling it out with Aberdeen. Certainly want to make sure that they are in the mix there going into the new year before they get to the break. Um, how do you see this one going? Yeah, I thought Mother were disappointing at the weekend. Uh, I think Kelly, again, are, are on a bad run as well. But I can't split the two of them, so I'm going to go one each. I'm going to take Mother to win this one. Yeah. Yep, 3-1. Three, one. This 3-1? Three, one. Yes. It's an emphatic one, that. I, yes. I feel as if, and I don't want to just pitch this to you, but I feel as if because you're so far behind now... Chasing. In the, the, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're now at the point where you're becoming desperate with yeah, the scores. Yeah, I was like roughly last season, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But to be fair, you'd never believe it. I mean, one or two... I, I mean, know, you did cool. have a situation, I think, earlier in the season where you, you rattled in 16 or 17 points. Yep. So it's perfectly, you know, within the realms I'm, of possibility. I, I'm need to do that off three or four weekends in a row because uh, I'm, I'm way behind yeah um, listen there was a period earlier on in the season where we were talking about Tommy Wright and you know whether the St Johnson board would stand by him I'm glad they did I like him I've got a lot of time for him and, and suddenly they managed to get a wee confidence boosting when they uh, themselves face St Mirren yeah I'm going to go for a home win in this one uh, I think uh, he's beginning to get through the players what's needed to, to get out of the, the position they're in so I'm going to go St Johnson to win 2-1 Yeah, Saints got the win against Hearts Barry, is that the thing that maybe Tommy Wright will say to them now, look we're turning the corner here Callum Booth has been given an extended contract he's made a, a helping uh, difference to them. Yep, I'm sure that I mean, this week's training would have been would have been bouncing with that one at Tynecastle so I, I think they'll, they'll win this game as well 2-1 OK, Aki's against Hearts, not for the purists, I've watched Daniel Stendel in the track side, I've listened to him in the after-match press conference the other night there uh, I just wonder if he's going to have enough time and enough resources in January to help them out this one is, is not about pure football, this is blood, guts and thunder surely. Yeah, that, that's what, they'll need to try and get a result um, I, I, th I don't think you can judge the new manager I think you've got to give him January and even into the summer window as well Peter um, but he must be thinking I've got a hell of a job here because yeah. um, I, I watched the game on Wednesday night I thought Hearts that, look, don't get us wrong they tried the first 20 minutes one Celtic scored they fell apart Peter yeah who's um, winning it I think I'm going to go with Hearts because they need it and yeah. as you said, it's going to be blood and thunder. And that's the type of kind of manager that I think he is. He'll, he'll be expecting that. Yep, OK. Ruffy, are you going with Hearts? Yeah, I'm going to go Hearts as well. Yeah. I, I, I know the, the two teams are down there, you know, but I think Hearts have got more quality than Aki, so I'm going to go Hearts 2-1. And briefly, Livy Ross County? Uh, Livy Ross County, I'm going to go home win 2-1. 
I'm going to go 3 0 Livy. Yeah, he's obviously you're taking into consideration the, <laughs> the virus that's sweeping through uh, Ross County. So if they've got that in the coupon, you might want to change it quickly. Here's how the Premier League table looks ahead of the game at Easter Road tonight. You can see it's vital that Rangers get that win just to make it very tight at the top with two points, would only be the difference if they can get the win. Hebs, on the other hand, will be looking and thinking uh, that win would leapfrog Kilmarnock and push them a little bit closer to Mother. Well, certainly healthier for Hibs now under Jack Ross than it was looking uh, just over a month ago under Paul Heckingbottom. But for Hearts, well, you can see how much trouble they're in at the bottom. Um, now, with that in mind, the predictor, before we get to the end of the season, uh, this is how it looks ahead of Hibs against Rangers. And wow, I never thought I'd see uh, Barry Ferguson just so far out of the picture at the moment, Ruffy. But from your point of view, you're absolutely delighted because it could be an absolute <laughs> humdinger of a, a bottle of red wine at the end of the season if he keeps this up. Yeah, the, my bank manager's already looked at the figures and uh, he's more than happy that I'm not going to get skint at the end of the season. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah, you never know. Um, I'm talking to you, obviously, from a lofty position, just wondering if you two are just going to fade it out while I race continually ahead. Um, just one little footnote. Mikel Arteta, your old teammate, he's the manager of Arsenal. Yeah, uh, played with Mikel at, at Rangers. He was a fantastic player. Um, he's went on and, and done his uh, apprenticeship under one of the best managers, Guardiola. And it's great to see one of your ex-teammates getting a top job. So hopefully Mikel will do well. Yep, OK. Uh, just for if you want to... Uh mix in with us and give us your opinion on football then why not across all our social media outlets Twitter of course Facebook Live Monday to Friday we're always uh, giving you our thoughts and interacting with you as well and on YouTube don't forget you can subscribe and you'll get all the latest unique video content including of course our podcast which is out with our special guest Gary Harkins is he nearing the end of his career Tam and Ruffy get right into him on that as well good bit of banter uh, reflecting on his career and the many clubs that he's played for um, over and above that I think I would just like to uh, basically wish everyone who supported us throughout the season of 2019 uh, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year I think uh, all of us Ruffy uh, don't take the support for granted we're getting bigger and better uh, we've added to our team we've strengthened from a position of strength uh, Barry as the captain said look we need extra signings <laughs> we brought Cowan in we brought Jackson in obviously to annoy people uh, and of course Alison McConnell McDonald's been here for seven years yeah it's just been great the, the more and more people are getting involved with the show and it's more of a family now uh, that's what we are yeah he's looking he's looking <laughs> oh, right, so <laughs> he's looking well, I'll be honest with you I've loved every minute I loved every minute yeah so from Barry Ruffy and myself Peter Martin we'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and of course a Happy New Year for 2020 hopefully you'll stick with us thanks for watching and don't forget coming up right after this programme you'll get a great deal on new and used cars in the Arnold Clark real sale Hello and welcome to the latest offers from Arnold Clark. If Italian street chic is your thing, then this Fiat 500 1.2 lounge model can be yours for 9998 or £159 a month. It comes in a variety of colours with 15-inch alloy wheels, leather steering wheel and Apple CarPlay. A surefire way to get noticed around town. Not to be outdone, this five-door 19-plate Toyota Igo X-Play is currently 10998 or £179 per month and includes a 7-inch touchscreen, rear-view camera and boasts an impressive 67.3 miles per gallon, perfect for city driving. And finally, we have the distinctive style of the Peugeot 208. This 1.2 Tech Edition comes with 3D connected navigation, park assist and 16-inch alloy wheels, all for £11,998 or £189 a month. And how about this for an early Christmas present? Until the 16th of December, if you buy any used or delivery mileage car from over 25,000 used car deals, we'll give you £300 off. For more details on this or any of the other fantastic deals available from Arnold Clark, simply visit arnoldclark.com or click on the link below. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy motoring. <coughs>